this company called Roadster Shop, they've been on my podcast before. One of the things they do is they do like a sleeper series. I think they call it the Legend Series. Um, I, I don't I'm I'm actually not sure what they call it. But what they do is they'll take an old car. So the outside looks like shit. The outside is patina and rust yeah. and all that stuff. And then it'll just completely redo <laughs> everything underneath it with like a crazy engine, insane brakes, insane handling and suspension. But it still looks like you know, a you know, 72 p- yeah. GMC pickup yeah, truck. Yeah, yeah. But underneath it, it's just a monster. <laughs> it's got all the it's got all the modern amenities and because new cars are so much more efficient. Like you don't realize when you uh, so they do stuff like this, that's with, not like. It. But they have different kinds of builds. No, so okay. these are all just like the different ones that they did. Right. Survivor Series, that's what it is. The Survivor Series. Well, so this, I think the Survivor Series, that's what it is. Like they leave the outside. <clears throat> it's interesting to me that older vehicles had so much more character. Like I don't know if it's just that it's. Uh... It's people who are doing drugs, bro. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> we 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 nailed it with them. We sat down with them and they introduced me to all these people that were the designers back in GM in the day. Yeah. This guy was a freak. He was wearing like crazy red suits <laughs> and this crazy. <laughs> guy was probably definitely on acid. <clears throat> and these are the people that created these insane shapes. And then when the sweeping psychedelics drug act of 1970 came along, they made everything a schedule one drug. Yeah, and, and that this, is when cars went downhill. It really, is when cars went downhill. It was early 70s. Yeah. Yes, you hmm. can get a 71 Barracuda and it's still sick. But you get into like 72, 73, ugh. Yeah. Those cars look like shit. 75, they're garbage. 79, they're done. Everyone's on Coke. Everyone thinks everything they do is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you get the movie show everything, girls. Everything know? lost its art and it, it became focused more on algorithms of what's going to sell and what's more efficient and what's easy, what's better to produce. And it's sort like, of. But back then, I don't even think they had data they were going on. They were going on past success. So if you go to like the 1980s, some of the worst movies that were ever made, like the cocaine <laughs> years, the, those I really strongly feel like those people were going on reputations of sales, and you know the studio would put a lot of money behind someone who had a, a great reputation, and this guy's fucking partying and doing lines <laughs> and writing crazy shit in these scripts, and some of them are good and some of them aren't so good, but they, there's, they're all kind of clunky, yeah. they're all kind of disconnected. Mm-hmm. That like a, a true masterpiece of a movie isn't, you know, like Taxi Driver. Like you go back and watch Taxi Driver. That's a masterpiece of a movie. It's so connected. You're connected to all the action. It's like you're on the edge of your seat. It's 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 wild. The acting's insane. Even Jodie Foster as a kid is insane in it. It's so good. But cocaine movies in the 80s like they just they're just they were nuts man they they didn't go on algorithms i think they just went on what they thought people wanted you know they probably took polls but who the fuck's answering polls polls are the worst way to get information because you're only getting information from people dumb enough to answer polls like that's such a small group of people how many people answer polls when they call you up? How many people have fucking people with a life have time for a poll? You know, do you think Jordan Peterson has ever answered a poll? Yeah, like um, I always get those calls and immediately hang up. Yeah, yeah. just shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm sorry I have to do this to you, but bye. No, don't hang up. Some of them will beg. Please. Yeah, it's, it's, they can't get um, anybody to do it. Yeah, it's it's fascinating to see throughout history times when people were able to really connect with other humans, like on that, like whether it's through movie or film or cars or whatever. It's like maybe it was the psychedelics or whatever. I don't know, but um, there was a huge disconnect. It seemed like after the seventies, with all that, things kind of went off. And it's interesting, even now, like I see a lot of the new a lot of the new movies coming out. They're all just sort of remakes of. They're just like a they're like a reconceptualization of something that's happened. 15 years ago there's not a lot of like new stuff out there for people to connect with it's yeah matt damon did this conversation about why it's so much more difficult to make movies now there's no dvd sales anymore and it was very interesting and it kind of makes sense i think it's just it's really hard to finance those fucking things and Mm. you you want a guaranteed success what's a guaranteed success you need a superhero People like superheroes, you know, and uh, if your superhero is trans, even better. (laughs) You can fit.